Okay, my name is Ariel Lugo. I am the director of the International Institute of Tropical Forestry, which is a, a unit of the USDA Forest Service. And the institute is located in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We've been here for 75 years. In fact, next year we will be celebrating our 75th anniversary. During 2013, the Colorado Art Ranch the Old Olipo Wilderness Institute, the Forest Service, decided to develop a program of residences where artists and scientists will get together into different areas uh, representing the different forests of the National Forest System um, to study and look at the wilderness. You know, you might ask yourself, why artists and why scientists? Well, you know, artists and scientists, they're the same, they're the same kind of people. You know, they, they're usually creative people that are always trying to understand their surroundings, trying to understand nature, but they do it with different approaches, they do it with different techniques. And, um, and so this is almost like an experiment. You, you put them together, you, you let them, for a month, uh, uh, you know, isolated almost uh, in the wilderness of El Yunque and see what they come up with. We have visiting artists selected by the Colorado Art Ranch coming from Switzerland, Arizona, and uh, New York to visit Puerto Rico. But we have been matching those visiting artists with local scientists that were selected by the Museum of Contemporary Art in Puerto Rico. This residency will bring the opportunity for the artists to directly work in the scientific process. During this month, artists will be collecting data, will be completely immersed in the scientific process. So my name is Grisha Coleman and I work at um, well, Arizona State University and I work in a school, a school called uh, the School of Arts, Media and Engineering and in Dance. Nuestro interés por nuestra expresión artística eh, tiene que ver un poco con lo que son las intervenciones en entornos naturales. Sí, son una... proyectos donde Nos cuestionamos muchas veces cómo la práctica artística puede rehabilitar los entornos naturales y conjugarse con los procesos biológicos de la naturaleza. ¿ves? So my name is Aline Veya and I'm living and working in Basel, Switzerland. I've been working for a while uh, in informatic database and then I came back to university and I studied the uh, aesthetic science and technology of art in Paris. Uh, my name is John Kors. Um, I'm an artist from Brooklyn. Um, I work on environmental based work that combines uh, technology and, and, and addressing social issues. Um, I was interested in this mainly because of uh, the ability to collaborate with, with the scientists at the uh, Savannah Research Institute. So today we're going to go to the headwaters where the Sonadora stream starts to emerge from the ground. And we're going to start by going to the uh, cloud forest and palm forest area. There we um, have set some traps and we're going to look at um, what, what got into the traps. There's different kinds of shrimp that live here in the streams and we're going to count how many we have of the different guilds of shrimp. Que estos camarones les encanta por alguna razón la flor del meaíto. Y los ensalté todos porque era la manera más práctica de montarlas en el carro sin tener 
todas estas flores, eh, todas estas flores sueltas por ahí haciendo un reguero, eh, pues las ensalté. Y pues nada, la tiré porque eso sé que se lo van a comer eventualmente. Y da la casualidad que eh, el arreglo parecía algo estético, pero yo creo que eso siempre está asociado con, el, con la profesión que uno ejerce, ¿verdad? Que parece que todo lo que uno hace es una obra de arte, pero, pero no, eh, no necesariamente. It's also nice to see them go off on a tangent and uh, explore a detail of a rock or a leaf or paint something um, with the soil and the mud and the clay because they're also um, discovering the site and uh, experimenting with the site in a different way than I do, but they're basically doing the same thing, looking at details and, uh, and making something out of those details. Y entonces, pues esa relación que tiene el río con el árbol, pues se me ocurrió que quizás se podía utilizar sobre la superficie de la roca, donde se le van trepando los líquenes, y entonces tú vas viendo esas manchas que te sugieren el, eh, el la copa, el follaje de un árbol, ¿no? Y entonces, como el barro también se va eh, arrastrando, ¿no? Por, por el cauce del río. El sedimento va bajando por el, por el río. A medida que íbamos bajando el río, veíamos mucho más sedimento, unas rocas más grandes, unas rocas más pulidas, más redondas. Y el barro que, que, estábamos, que, que yo estaba utilizando para aplicar sobre la piedra, pues probablemente venía del tope del yunque donde habíamos estado por la mañana temprano. When you talk to another scientist, you're always talking about numbers, you're talking about facts, you're, you, you, you kind of have, you know, cold discussions about nature. But with an artist, of course, um, you introduce their, their sensitivity to the environment. And, and they, you know, you, you get engaged in, in, um, in their interpretation of what you're saying. And I, I'm just having just a great time because I will give them five different stories about a forest and they'll take my five stories and combine them into a sixth story that I don't, that has pieces of all of them, you know, um, put together in a different way and they, they become a sixth story of, of the forest. And to me, well, that's what this is all about, is the synergy between two groups of people that look at nature with great respect, try to understand nature, try to relate to nature, and come up from the same experience with, with different views of nature. So you have research on both ends, but research from, from the arts pr production point of view is, of course, has you know, different goals and asks similar but different questions, so getting at that is another aspect of being in this residency. You really understand when you hear that um, this process from some, uh, something dying and something growing thanks to this first one who was dying, this kind of uh, life circle. And uh, so this I, I'm really happy to to have understood that, or to have, of course, it was an idea that was a, a, a theoretical idea, and then I could feel it, really. There's a lot of research that the artists need to do to create an artistic expression in nature using wilderness as a template. Um, and there's a lot to be learned by the scientists in, in, in terms of the angles and the new perspectives that the artists see and bring into the interpretation of what's wilderness about. Yo creo que lo mejor de todo es la noción de responsabilidad que podemos desarrollar asesorándonos correctamente con los científicos que tienen el conocimiento de cómo proteger este ecosistema. Just as we as we've sort of seen a lot here, you know, the vast majority of people aren't thinking about their environment necessarily as something that uh, you have to uh, protect or preserve or give back to in a, in kind of way. So it's to open up that space for people to be able to reflect upon that without being bombarded by. Um, quantitative data was sort of like, okay, well, this is what the scientists say about climate change, for example, at a general level, but still people don't respond. So the question is, why don't, why, why don't we respond as a 
species to the, you know, the taking care of each other, but the taking care of the environment, like the environment as an extension of your own survival. The fusion of art and science, it's a new field. And I think with these experiences, we broke into new ground. It's something that I think it will be worth exploring. It will help scientists to bridge to a broader audience using the artist as a tool. And I think it's a great benefit for the artists to have access to scientific knowledge that can be a background or, or more knowledge that can be used to express their artistic work. And we started this with artists, but I can tell you, we might be stimulated to next time bring lawyers or bring doctors or bring housewives. Uh, I think we've started something that might be very important, and that is to develop a dialogue in society about the values of nature, but do it in nature. The benefits will be tremendous because we are both a vehicle, science and art, to one great mission, which is to educate and reach to the broader audience. So the scientist has acted as a synergistic uh, force to bring us together in a natural setting and then have a discussion about what we're looking at, what the values are, how we might use it, how we might manage it, etc. And, and so from that point of view, this activity has been eye-opening for us and it might be the beginning of something real cool.